Hey, Salon Doctor here. I want to talk to you about the prep season. If you look here, uh, what my attitude is, is this is the time to get advanced to what's going to be go for uh, 2025. Listen, there's nothing that tells us that 2025 isn't going to be a fantastic breakout season. And I think it's time, you know, we really got to get some serious planning into it. Now, my message today is more for those folks that are newer to the business. A lot of you that are veterans, which I've worked with for many years, you're way past this. We've talked about what to do for the peak season, whatever. But it's kind of for the newer folks that maybe this is the first or second season, whatever. And it's just kind of a reminder of things. And I call it advanced to go because there's so, just so money, so much money out there that, but, you know, sometimes you get people that just say, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. And that's asking for trouble. It's time now. It's time now to work. And I, you know, we've, we've got the Thanksgiving holiday behind us. We've got one month here in December, which is always a, a difficult month because everybody's buying, you know, you have presents, you have family stuff going on. But peak season will start. Typically, it starts around Valentine's Day. Now, last year, 2024, it started late. It went fairly well into June and even some in July, but it started late. This year, I think it's going to start early. And I'll tell you why. It's because the country now is going through this huge change. And forget politics just for a moment. But the consumer confidence and all the indexes are the consumer confidence is coming up dramatically. They see the change is a good thing. And even though even though uh, inflation you know, it's not coming down at the table where you could see the prices getting cheaper on groceries. My gosh, what my wife and I spend on groceries is ridiculous, just like all of you. But th there's a there's a perception and the belief that it's going to come down in 2025. And that's all you really need. You need the consumer to have confidence that there is something ahead of them that's good. And I think right now that's what they're seeing. I think 2025 is going to be a breakout year. Is it going to be as dramatic, let's say, as when we came out of COVID. I don't know about that, but I'd say it's going to be a big year. And I would guess, my guess right now is with some of the new pricing that we're changing, at least with my clients, some of the new pricing approaches, a few pieces, new pieces of equipment, and this consumer confidence, I'm looking at everybody being up 20, 25% for uh, 2025. And it has to start with peak. So, hey, if you need help, there you go, free consultation. You're going to get an hour from me. They're not going to cost you a dime. What we do in that hour is I take your numbers and I analyze them to see where do we have strengths? Where do we have weaknesses? Where, what are things that we need to improve to get you ready for peak? And of course, the big thing that we're going to be looking at is always EFTs. It's gotten to the point now where I look at EFTs and I look at lotion sales because lotions are a reflection of what people are doing. They're tanning. If somebody buys a new bottle of lotion, they're going to tan. Uh, if they're buying a new EFT, they're going to tan. So, so if you need help, and I've, I've done just about everything. I haven't changed a lot of lamps and I haven't changed a lot of acrylics, but I, everything else I've done in terms of analyzing your numbers, putting together a marketing plan, what I call an action plan, HR. HR is a big thing. I go back many, many years. I've been managing people since 1968. Oh, my gosh, that's old. Anyway, you need help. Give me a call. We'll do a consultation. And I'll give you some direction of where you can go and we'll take it from there. So, but let's move on here. Let's go to, are you ready for peak 2025? Do you have your UV and spray pricing correct to maximize customer investment, duration of tanning and price levels easy for upselling? Now here's, here's the message in that first line to maximize customer investment, which is by, by the way, both their money and their time. And part of the time is investment of their time is the experience and a big part of the experience is the people you have behind the counter. No question about that. But let's just talk about the rest of this. What makes it important is you wanna have an EFT plan that gets you a duration of tanning and price levels for upselling. This is, in, this is very important. You want people that look at your pricing sheet and you want your salespeople to say this too. This is gonna be easy for me to upsell them because it's only so much, so much more per tan. Now, those of you that are out there that are doing an easy on, easy off plan, it has its merits. It also has some concerns. 
And in the last two trade shows over the last 30 days, I've shared these concerns with many people, people that are on easy on and easy off and people that are on traditional pricing. And there's arguments on both sides. So we'll get to that in just a minute on this broadcast here. But anyway, what you want is something that's easy to upsell because you want your employees involved in this. You want them to feel success. Oh, wow, I, I was able to upsell this and able to upsell that. It, it gives them a feeling of accomplishment. Where we make the mistake in this industry is we allow employees to not be productive. And when I say productive, not just deep cleaning. We want them to feel a measure of success. So I'm going to give you a lot of clues here. And if we do a consultation, I'm going to give you all kinds of clues. Okay, so, so now is the time to get your acting your price act together because i'll tell you if you come to me for consultation and if one of the things i'm doing the action plan for you is your pricing pricing doesn't happen overnight because you do have kind of an easy on easy off uh, model out there and you've got a traditional model and they both work but in different ways and then you got people that want to uh, look at the different graphics that we've used for pricing sheets what do you do for uh, spa equipment that you're bringing in what do i do with uh, uh you know spray tanning how do i use some of this to maybe as a closer on my efts and whatever so these are all very important decisions it is rare that i can get a pricing sheet done um in less than a week or two weeks because i go back and forth with the client and they say well why don't we do this one and that's great that's i'm all about collaboration i'll take the knowledge of working with more than 600 owners i'll share that with you but you know, we, we collaborate, we go back and forth. And I gotta tell you, the reason really I really know what the heck I'm doing is because having worked with more than 600 owners, and if some of you are out there, on the, and you probably are gonna see this, some of the people I've worked with, the reason I think I know I'm good at it, I know I'm good at it, is because I learned from all those 600 owners. They kept, we would do something that really made sense there, and I take it on to the next one and whatever. So anyway, time to get your pricing act together. And the right marketing in place for January through June 2025. And remember that right marketing and the right pricing, sales cures all ails. I'll have people come to me and say, geez, John, I'm running 41%. I just just two weeks ago, a two chain, a two salon chain, I won't tell you where, but came to me and they're running 41.5% uh, payroll. And the reason for that is when I looked at their numbers, what I'm seeing is a huge gap in what they could be doing in their EFT. Their average EFT withdrawal was low. Their average EFT duration was low. They were trying to get by with an easy on, easy off. It just wasn't working. And so you got to get those sales. Remember, we're top line. This industry is all about uh, top line. So it's great staffing. If is great staffing ready with excellent incentives. Now, let me talk about incentives. I just <laughs> kind of pains me sometimes, and I guess it's in a good way because I get so much business, but when somebody comes to me and I say, okay, so what are you paying to bonus somebody on an EFT? Oh, $3, $4. It's insane because you want people that work for you to have a big reason for coming back to the salon and being there on time for their shift interacting with every customer trying to sell them an EFT or a lotion, you want that. But it's got to be something that's really meaningful. It's got to have meat in it. At the Bronze and Beyond uh, trade show just uh, last week or weekend before, whatever, I gave a seminar on incentives. And I'm going to uh, share that because we had it videotaped. I'm going to share that with everybody. Uh, I'm going to try to get it out sometime this weekend, whatever, so you can see what I was talking about. But you got to have excellent incentives. you got to have people, you got to wake your staff up. You know, if you think you're going to get them for three bucks, forget it. But when they're looking at an EFT where they can make 25 or $30, and right now, whoever's watching is 35 or $20, 25 or $30. If you look at the way the pricing is done correctly, you could take in on a, a mid to high level uh, tanning experience, you might be able to take in with lotion four or five hundred bucks over the duration of the customer staying with you. I would give somebody thirty dollars to sell that every day. So anyway, excellent incentives, very, very important. And 
just don't hire good people, hire great ones. I got to take a little, give you a little story. So years ago, I was recruited to run the uh, entertainment division for Target stores. I was director of marketing and operations. And I remember saying to the chairman of the board of Target, I said, when there, I was first on the job and he said, well, what's your, what's your first job that you're trying to do right now? I said, well, I'm trying to find some good people. And he said, we don't want good people. <laughs> We want great people. And that's what I'm going to say to you, too. I think what happens is that some of us out there in tanning salon land, we just try to get by. We try to settle. I got to tell you, start doing your recruiting now. Get your staff together. Oh, but I may have to pay some extra payroll or double pay. Forget about the payroll now. Forget about if you've got 41% in payroll. If you raise your sales, you'll amortize that payroll over higher sales had a, a chain uh, two years ago that was running uh, 30, 35 or 36%. They're down to 27% now because we raised their sales so much. So anyway, also I put on that line, you see people that love tanning. We will never as an industry pay the most on regular salaries. Not, I'm not talking about incentives, but regular salaries. We will never pay the, is the most that somebody is look, looking to get. If they're looking for just a job where they can make as much money as they can, which I understand they've got a family or kids or whatever. And if they can go to work for Amazon, they will, you know, but what we want is a combination. We want a balance of somebody that thinks that what they're getting paid is a fair, not necessarily great. Also incentives couple with that, but you're looking for a person that has a passion, that loves the tanning industry, that loves the fact that in their job, they're sending people home, sending them out of the salon, feeling better about themselves. So anyway, what we do now is we're going to have to focus on EFTs, focus on that staffing and focus on EFTs above everything else, because that's where it's at. Okay. So again, getting ready for peak 2025. Nearly 30 years of tracking sales shows that about 65%, it might vary, it might be 60%, it might be 68%, but on average, 65% of our sales over the year comes from January through June, which is the argument that it'll be made sometime on, uh, you know, on, on easy on, easy off, because the assumption is we're going to get a lot of people signed up. They're going to stay with us eight months into the fall and past Jason because uh, we've got some spa equipment and that kind of thing to sell them. That's what their assumption is. If people stay on that, but I will tell you that many clients that I've dealt with just in the last couple of weeks, when I look at the EFTs that they sell on easy on easy off, here's a number for you about 22% of their uniques, 22%. Whereas when we're dealing with a traditional pricing model, we've got people that are doing 60% of their revenues in EFT. So anyway, 65% in the first six months. And then of course, you know, in the post season, we got about 35%. And that's another story, by the way, because I think people tend to get past June and they kind of, maybe they mentally go on vacation or whatever. And there's still money to be made in July through uh, December. So, um, and I got, you know, you probably heard this before. I probably said it before in some of my other webinars or seminars. If you fail the plan, you're planning to fail and you're planning to lose peak. If you take anything away from what you're watching me today, don't wait. I'm recording this right now on the day after Thanksgiving, because I know people, you know, Black Friday promotions or Pink Wednesday or whatever they were doing, they're all busy and they were busy cooking a, uh, big turkey. We had a we had a 22 pounder for just my wife and I. Uh, grandkids are another part of the of the country. So, but anyway, so, but this now is I'm going to be dealing with clients this weekend, and this first two weeks of December, I'm going to be buried. So, if you're planning to get a uh, consultation with me, I would suggest that you sign up, and you will be going on my website, and you'll see the free consultation. I would get it like now because then I can plan my schedules. It'll get to a point where I'm so busy that I can't 
I can't possibly give everybody the kind of service that I want to give. So again, stop the madness of counting expense pennies and peak and focus on top line sales. EFTs are annuities that you need. And that is huge on the full year of profit health. And again, sales cures all ails. Okay, so more than 75%, this is an interesting statistic, more than 75% of individual tanners who come through the door and peak that start with you in January or February are not currently on any form of package tanning pack, any form of tanning package or EFT membership. 75%. Now, some of you will say, no, 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 we, are, we do better than, listen, okay, maybe you do, but an enormous percent of people walking through the door are people that aren't on a package or because you've done the good job that a lot of you have by getting the store looking great and new equipment and new bulbs and you've got a good staff and whatever, you may end up with people that were going to your competition. So there's still a new prospect for you. And it's the important thing is that we want your salespeople to know that there's hundreds of opportunities to earn bonus cash. When I do my salon selling um, uh, essentials seminar that I do for all my clients. It's about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. I meet with all the salespeople and managers, whatever. And what I show them is how you can sell almost every customer that comes through the door. And that's what you want. You want your salespeople thinking this person coming through the door has got a dollar sign on them. I am not trying to be that mercenary, but it is true. And the way to do that, and that's another, um, webinar you'll probably see on my YouTube channel, but is to look at the track record, the uh, the history of the tanner. And the history of the tanner will tell you when they bought a lotion and what package of tanning they're on right now and should they be updated to a better tanning. That's like I said, it's another webinar, but you want the employee to know that there is a heck of a lot of bonus cash they can make. And selling EFTs does not naturally doesn't come naturally to most salespeople. For one thing, as we all know, we hire sometimes entry level service people. I hope, I pray that you don't hire college students. I'm sorry. I mean, that may fly in the face of what some of you people feel, but I have dealt with over the years so many campus locations. It doesn't work. Oh, I belong to a sorority. Oh, she belonged to a sorority. Well, I'm, now there's all this kind of this drama. Oh, I can't work that shift that you gave me because I've got, I'm going to go deal, dig water wells in Egypt. Or no, but I can work every other Ash Wednesday. All of this stuff. And this is the kind of thing, by the way, when you do your interviewing, that you want to find out, hopefully they're going to be honest with you. What other schedules do you have? Is it a full-time job and you work with me part-time? And other than working the full-time job and working with my part-time, what else do you have to do? Because if they are honest with you and say that there's other things that they are doing, I'm training horses, I'm a cheerleader, I'm whatever, then you have to say, are they really going to have time to put the passion into this job that we want? Okay, so it doesn't come naturally for most salespeople because they haven't had the experience of it when they start with you. They may have had some experience in retail and please don't hire fast food people. People have just, their only experience has been fast food. I go to the Wendy's drive up. I don't care if the person's rude. I, I don't care. Just give me my burger and let me get out of here. I mean, they can be rude as long as the burgers, you know, okay. Probably shouldn't eat those anyway, but anyway, so it has to be taught. This is a, this is a skill that's got to be taught to people how to sell somebody, how to overcome objections, how to close on selling an EFT. This is this is stuff that I teach and all in my Salon Selling Essentials webinar. When people are my clients, you get all kinds of goodies. My whole my whole HR closet opens up with its handbooks and its eval forms and its, um, you know, warning forms and, uh, you know, recruiting apps. I mean, it's all there. OK, so moving on. We talk about this, I've talked about this every time. When you're setting up your pricing and you you want your sales consultants to be excited, just always remember that whatever you set up as far as incentives, it has to answer the question, what's in it for me? Because you may be excited about the business that you own, 
but are they going to be excited about it? Because remember, at the end of the day, they're not as empathetic about you. They can be empathetic sometimes for the tanner. Oh, they can't afford this. That's You almost want to slap somebody when they say that because think about the money people spend to get their nails done. Okay, uh, well, you know, his nails look great. What did you spend on them? Oh, $60. How long did they last? Oh, about two weeks. <sighs> Listen, when it comes to being an indulgence product, overall, I think we're pretty inexpensive compared to the results that we give. Somebody that has nice nails, great. But if they've got a beautiful tan, believe me, they're getting compliments that no one's going to stop. So uh, it, it's this is something that we need to teach. And they need to know why they're important and what this industry is important to. Okay, so confusing price sheets offers that don't show value of cheaper possession. Here's... One of the things I've recommended, and I've done this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, when I make up and I do a pricing sheet, it'll be my suggested pricing sheet for you, having analyzed all your numbers and where you're at right now and what you're what you're aspiring to do and new equipment and a lot of different things that go into it. So I like to show the value of what the person's getting today when they come in. And I say today because if somebody that's going to uh, Starbucks and is getting a triple latte uranium 235 and they're spending $10 for it or whatever, and they do this a couple times a week, you know, just think of the money that people spend. But the reason they spend that on that latte is because it's this price today. So when we put together pricing sheets, we show the customer what it's going to cost them per tan and the package that they bought. Because we know that most folks graduating from high school today have a terrible, terrible math knowledge. I'm not taking a shot at them. There's a lot, they're very sharp in a lot of other areas, but, but when it comes to math, they're just not good. So we want the math to be easy for the consumer and easy for the salesperson to sell. So we show that the prices get cheaper the longer that you commit. Um, okay, also, research. What does our research show us about peak failure? Research shows that most failures are, um, on peak uh, occur because sales personnel are not trained and properly compensated for selling EFTs. They're not compensated when they upsell from one level to another. This is a really uh, important point, by the way. And I think a lot of folks now, at least my clients are all getting pretty smart on this. They're saying, well, look at if you're, if you've got an entry level, whatever, and uh, somebody comes in and they're on entry entry level EFT, and your employee can upsell them to a next level or a next level after that, we should compensate them for that. Again, I go back to what I said. We want to look at every customer coming through the door as somebody that we can sell something to. And if they see in the in the history that this tanner is on a low entry level, and you you ask them the the best rhetorical question in this industry is hi i see where you're at and are you getting as dark as you want now if they're at the top level that's a different story they walk in and they you know they look like rihanna you know they're getting the best tan that they could get but asking them are you do you want to get are, are you getting as dark as you want to get it's a rhetorical because most people say no i want to look darker okay so we want to upsell uh, we want to upsell. We want a, a given sentence for that upsell. So salon management do not regularly monitor the number of tanners. And this is how we fail. This is how I'm going over how we fail. Salon management. <clears throat> and what I have found, which is unfortunate, is that most salon managers that I end up working with, I'll eventually say to the owners, so what is the management stuff that they really do? What do they do that separates them from salon associates? And you find out that a lot of managers are just glorified sales associates. We pay them a little bit more per hour. They get a commission on lotion. Maybe they get a commission on EFTs, whatever. But they're not looking at the other employees because, frankly, they don't care. You know. So if you want your manager to be a true manager and watching what the other employees are doing, monitoring, you know, what's going on, what they, because and we have a, we have a thing called the MVP plan. And another thing, if you become one of my clients, I 
I shouldn't say I insist because I collaborate with my clients, but I will push hard to have a manager monitoring an MVP plan. And what that is, is ranking the numbers, tan uh, lotion per tan average, lotion services per tan average, uh, EFT close rate, a lot of good stuff. If the manager is doing that, I imagine if the manager is doing that and they do a report to you as an owner, they say, well, this is what I see from last month. These are the people I would like to reinforce because they did a great job. Here's somebody that's not doing such a good job. And, and by the way, that's okay. It's okay that we find out that someone's not doing a good job. It, would be, it wouldn't be okay if we didn't know that. That's why monitoring is so important. It's okay that we find out that someone's not doing a good job. If I'm the owner and I look at the results of that MVP plan and the manager says to me, so-and-so is not doing their job, I would say, great, I'm glad that you found that out. What are you doing about it? What's the plan? I've managed thousands of employees at corporations over the years. And my boss has never cared about problems I was having with my employees. They wouldn't, it just, they want me to, you know, get conclusions that are good for them. And so uh, uh, their attitude would be, well, if they're not good, then John, what are you doing about it? I mean, then the problem doesn't become the employee that's not working. The problem become would become me. I learned that many, many years ago. Okay, so next, um, sales employees are hired too quickly. You know that. And I tell you right now, as we're sitting here, and it's almost December next week. Uh, matter of fact, Monday, it's the 2nd of December. I guarantee you that probably a majority of owners out there, and it's going to sound like I'm really doing a number on owners. I got to tell you, I have a lot of respect for owners. They have a lot of intuition and initiative that they put in their business. They found a location. They, they you know, negotiated that lease. They negotiated equipment. They did a build out of it. I mean, you, you guys work your butts off. HR usually is probably the last thing that they want to get good at. I mean, or they think about because our industry was one where people wanted to work in a tanning salon and you could hire somebody at the last minute, which just kills you because we end up settling. We take anybody that'll walk through the door that who says they promise not to steal too much and their heart's beating. And this, the turnover in this industry is ridiculous and turnover is incredibly expensive. So we hire too quickly and we fire too slow. But the MVP plan I'm talking about will show you a trajectory of how these people are doing. It'll tell you who to help, who to reinforce, and maybe who you need to replace. Because it's, you know, selling in the tanning industry is not for everybody. It, it doesn't mean that they're bad people. It's just not for everybody. Okay. Now, poor marketing planning, another way that it's failed. You want a wow promotion in January to grab market share. Uh, that's something else that if you hire my services, I'm going to show you what we do, particularly the first four to five months of the next season of uh, 2025, because it's important. It's important to have a wow in January. Remember that Suntan City every year does a week of free tanning. Sometimes, I think this year they did it, they're going to do it, or they're doing it, I think it's after Christmas. I don't know, but it's, they used to do it like in the second or third week of January. Now they're doing them sooner because they're trying to grab market share. And that's what you should do too. So if you don't have a marketing plan, you, you're going to have problems. So you won't if you're with me. Okay, so confusing pricing sheets offers. you got to show the value. I mentioned that before, on the value on a per tan basis by going agreeing to a higher level. So admit that you don't know everything and get my help now. Because, man, I'll tell you, four weeks from now. And it's amazing how many people will come to me in January. And I'm always very nice to them, always very helpful, and I always help them a lot. But, you know, the horse is kind of out of the barn going down the road. And so it's a little crazy. You need my help if you're going to get it. Get it now. Here's the QR code. You can go on the screen. That QR code will take you over to the salon doctor. And you can sign up for a free consultation and we'll do it. We'll schedule it as soon as I can. I'm a little bit uh, taxed right now, but we'll get to it. 
And if you go on Tanning Salon Owners Forum and you post on there, does John Fire know what the hell he's talking about? Is he really good at this, blah, blah, blah? You'll get fantastic comments, and I'm very confident of that. Okay, so listen to me on this as well. I've known in nearly 30 years of consulting, actually 34 years, 600 individual, it's probably only about, it's about 640, I think 645 now. Uh, I'm the only consultant in this industry that aggregates numbers. If you want to know how your numbers stack up against our system, and we've got typically in our system, we'll have about 300, 350 salons. I don't have that many from 2024 yet. I won't have them until probably March, but I got a lot of numbers from 2023. So I can tell you both on the easy on easy off plans and also the traditional selling plans. Um, I mean, I've got people that swear by easy on easy off. I've got people that swear by having a three and a six month option. I can give you those names too. There'd be people that would give me the permission to tell you what those are. I am the number one consultant in this industry. And then again, there's my, um, email address or the address for the inside in-house consult, or you can just go in that QR code. And this is kind of the stuff that I've been doing for a long time. I'm also, beside being a speaker and a motivator, I am an author. I've written a lot of books all about managing people. And when you, uh, you come to me as a client, I've got, I think it's six or seven eBooks that you'll also get. So, Hey, I hope to see you soon on a um, uh, on a consultation, and uh, we're going to do it. We're going to make peak 2025 a huge peak season. So thanks for listening.